So we spend a lot of time making sure we understand slope and intercept and predictions and residuals, all the pieces that go with the least squares regression line. The one thing we have not done yet is actually find the linear regression line itself. And so that's what we'll do with this example. So this is the same example we were working with in 4.1. The following table lists the percent of students who receive free reduced lunch um, and the percent who score or pass the math portion of the state exam at public schools in Sandusky, Ohio. All right, so here's the percent receiving free reduced lunch. Here's the percent passing the math test. So remember, this is our x over here. This is our y over here. And you can see that when you look at the graph, of course, because x is always on the x-axis and y is always on the y-axis. All right, so the first thing they want us to do is compute the line of best fit. Now we can do this one of two ways. We can do it with the calculator. Matter of fact, we already did it. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> so when we did the calculator, it's right here, but let me show you how to find it again. Stat, edit, of course, is where you would go to enter your data if you have not already. Then stat again, calculate, and it's number four, linear regression, AX plus B. Um, don't worry about number eight, although you could do number eight if you wanted, but let's do number four. So L1, L2, and go down to calculate, and there you have it. So when you write it, you're first of all going to write it with a little hat. Um, they don't do that, although they should, but the calculator just isn't as good about it. And then it's y hat equals negative 0.283x plus 69.108. So you put the a and b values that are given to you down in the equation. Right? So they're telling you that a is negative 0.283, so use that. You should have a number for A, a number for B, and letters for X and Y, because they're variables. Now, there is another way you can write it, so let me show you that, because that's the way StatCrunch does it. Now, again, we already did this with StatCrunch, but I'll show it again. So when you go to Stat, you have your data set, obviously, um, in the table. Then you go to Stat, regression. I'm not clicking on anything yet. I'm just kind of moving my mouse over. And then I want simple linear, so that's what I will click on. I will tell it the x variable is percent on free reduced lunch, the y variable is percent passing the math test, and all the rest of the stuff is high level stuff we're going to ignore. So just click compute. And right here is the equation of the line. And they're writing it a little differently. That's y right there, percent passing the math test. That's the y equals 69.108, take away 0.283, and then percent on free reduced lunch, that's x. So they're kind of writing it backwards. It's perfectly valid. The other way you can see it is down here in the table. It tells you that the intercept, which is the b, is 69.108, and the slope, which is a, is negative 0.283. So you could get it from there also. All right, so I'm going to write it the stat crunch way, just so you can see. Stat crunch is writing it y hat equals, and of course they're writing it all out in words, percent on free reduced lunch. So equals 69.108 minus 0.283x. And they wrote that all out in words as well. Oh, sorry. So for y, they wrote percent of students passing math. And for x, they wrote percent of students on free reduced lunch. Just you see this, right? Free reduced lunch, that's x. Passing the math test, that's y. Right there. It's OK, because it's the same thing. It's just writing it differently, right? What's important is that the 69.108 is positive and by itself, and then the negative 0.283 is negative and tied to that x. That's actually a multiplication in there. So either way you want to write it is perfectly valid. This is from the calculator, that's from StatCrunch. Or you could use the table from StatCrunch and rewrite it the way you want to, which would be this way. All right, now let's look at the slope. The slope is negative 0.283. And I always like to think of it as over 1 because then I remind myself, hey, that's change in y over change in x. And it helps me remember the interpretation piece. All right, what the interpretation script says that if x increases by 1, y is expected to increase or decrease by this negative 0.283. All right, so x. x is 
the percent of students on free reduced lunch. So we're saying, hey, if the percent of students on a free reduced lunch in a school increases by 1, then we expect the y, here, right here, the y, which is the percent passing the math test, to decrease because it's negative by approximately a. And that's what we'll write. So, um, and again, it's written out as a script. We get a little loose with this, especially the x increasing by 1. So we could say for every um, percent of student on free reduced lunch, right? Or as the percent of student of free reduced lunch increases by 1. Or for every 1% increase in the free reduced lunch percentage by 1, etc. So you could write that a lot of ways. But if I want to follow the script, let me write it out. It said, on average, I'll follow the script as closely as I can. If x increases, so if the percent of students on free or reduced lunch increases by 1, and I always like to throw in that percent. Um, because it's just reiterating, right? Because it's percent sort of acting like my unit here. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to say about that. So this is all explaining the x, right? If x increases by 1, then we would expect, right, the y, the, then the percent, the percent of students passing the state math exam right because that's all the y value I said y so I wrote my exam to decrease by 0.283 percent right because it's a percent all of this is your why. You're writing it all out in words. And otherwise, that's pretty much following the script exactly. Right? If x increases by 1, y decreases by, and I chose decrease, of course, because it was negative. So that's why I don't have to write a negative here. Decrease because it was negative slope. If it's a positive slope, you'd say increase. All right, now what about the y-intercept, and does it make sense? Hmm. Okay, so the y-intercept would be 0, comma, and then the constant, 69.108. That's the y-intercept. It's not just the 69.108. It's a point, 0, comma, right? So it's x and y. And then, actually, I can change this so you guys can see this better. This is change in x on the bottom. And this is change in y on the top. And so you're using both numbers to write this interpretation. When x goes up by 1, y goes down by 0.283. When x is 0, hmm. OK, what would it mean for x to be 0? If x is 0, that means you have a school that has no students on free reduced lunch. Does that make sense? All right, first of all, they didn't ask me whether it made sense. They just want us to interpret, so I, I will. So if or when a school has no students on free reduced lunch, that's the zero part. So I'm going to actually label this. This is the interpret part right here. So when a school has no students on free reduced lunch, that's x is 0, right? That's x, right? That's what I'm in interpreting right there, right? So when x is 0, then we would expect sixty-nine point one zero eight percent of students to pass the state math exam. And that's all the y, right? That's y equals 69.108. That's what I'm interpreting right there. 
Now, they ask the question, does it make sense? And I would argue, uh, no. No, it does not make sense. <laughs> so we did the interpretation. Let me, let me write down here, right? Does it make sense? No. So no public school has nobody on free reduced lunch. It's actually a rising phenomenon. We, we are giving away more lunch because they're discovering that um, students that <laughs> are not starving actually can study better. No public schools have no one on free reduced lunch, at least that we know of. And this is far outside the scope of the model. I mean, look at your data set. So your lowest data point is right here, which is 15. Zero is way outside of that, well off the graph. So x equals zero is far outside the scope of the model. Right, it's off the graph for, for starters, right? It's, it's so far off the graph. And x equals 15 is our lowest, is lowest data point. 